Hey, homeschool knockout. Listen, are you ready to switch up your day from the chaotic mix of seven plus subjects in a day to a more peaceful and orderly intentional day? Well, baby, block schedules are here to save the day. Let's talk about it. So just like there are many different approaches to homeschooling, there are several different approaches to scheduling your homeschool day. Block scheduling is one of them. And all block scheduling is just a fancy little phrase to say you work within chunks of dedicated time. So chunks of time. That's all block scheduling is. So let me give you a quick visual of what a block schedule looks like so you can so it will be easier for you to follow along in this video. So this is what a typical weekly block schedule looks like. You have your days of the week on top and on the sides you have your blocks. For this example, I have five blocks. You can have as many or as less as you want. You saw on that example, I had five blocks, okay? So five dedicated chunks of time. Now in each block, you decide what you want to get done in that block and everything stays within that block. So when that time period is up, when that block is over, boom, you go to the next block. Now, typical blocks, what you would put in a block, it totally varies, but here are some common um, examples. One block could be your core block, which means your core subjects, math, reading, writing. So maybe that's, maybe that those subjects are so important that you want them all in one block because you know, with this block, everything that's important for our, homes, our homeschool day is going to get done. You could have another block where if you have children of multiple ages and grades and you want to homeschool them all together, that could be your, and you can call it whatever you want to, that could be your together, your family block where you're teaching or learning about um, science, history, health, um, your social studies. Those are subjects that are perfect for teaching multiple grades and ages. So that could be a block. You could have your science block or your your um, hands-on box where there's always experiments or things going on and it takes it takes time to set up or to clean up. So that could be a block of time there. You could have a language arts block. You, you have your break block. You can have a physical, you know, PE block or um, exercise block. So you see where I'm going with the blocks? Could have a block for just independent work, okay? Or independent study. You could have a block on read. There are so many different, you could have uh, morning time or Bible blocks. So just think of how your homeschool is set up and how you can just corral certain areas or subjects or things in your life and then put those in a block, okay? So let me show you an example of a filled in block schedule. Okay, so this is a block schedule. Don't be scared, y'all. It's a lot of print, but listen. When you look at this example, I have five blocks, okay? And block one, I named it morning focus, but some people might call it their core. And all that means is these are the subjects we have to focus on to get done for that day. Um, in the red, in the in the block, you'll it's just a description of what could go in that block. And then there's a time frame. It is a loose time frame. This is just so we can kind of see how our day is progressing. Now for the block, I have block one, I have math and language arts. That's important for us. And then I have snack and then I have the transition time. You want to add in that, that margin of time, okay, before you transition to your next block. And we have that for the week. Block two is our exploration. So that's where we actually all do our work together. So these are great subjects where you can homeschool multiple ages and grades. That's going to be your history, your geography, your Bible study, your PE, your uh, science, uh, social studies, all of that good stuff. That That's a good block to have. And I just call that midday exploration. Uh, block three is your lunch time. I call it lunch and leisure. Whatever your kids wanna do, you can add in um, silent reading time, uh, PE, um, free time, whatever moves you. Block four is our individual learning time or catch up time. So this is especially good for your older kids. So you can work with your younger kids during that time. So your block four could be 
the time you do more work with your your smaller kids while your older kids um, get their work done, right? Or vice versa. So um, good examples of what to put in a block like this would be individual learning, catch up work, extracurriculars, um, et cetera. So while your older children or more independent children are doing these things in this um, box, you could be working with your younger children. And then block five, um, is just the, how to wind down your day. So I had a read aloud, snack, free time outdoors, playing. Also, another way to set up a block is to alternate. Maybe you have one core class, one easy class. So you can play around with the subjects. You can have all easy subjects. You can have a mix of easy and hard. You can have a mix of subjects based on your child's weaknesses or strengths in topics or subjects that you're learning or teaching. So there's all kinds of all kinds of ways you can um, structure your core. These are just examples of what you can put in these blocks. Okay, so I just want you to have a good idea of how you can chop up your day and what are good. Uh, companions to go within a block. So I hope that makes sense. Let's let's move on. So why would someone choose to use a block schedule? Well, number one, a block schedule gives you a rough framework for staying on task. It also gives you flexibility. You can move. You can move your blocks around throughout the day. Are you a morning person? Are you an afternoon person? Do you want this block on this day because you, you know, this day is crazy or this day is calm, right? It also adds structure, so your children and you can kind of know what to expect in these blocks, right? Also, blocks are good for accountability. So if you get through certain blocks, you know you got that done for the day. You can be happy with yourself and move on to another day. You've lived to see another day. So blocks are really good for all of those various reasons, okay? For my working parents, uh, when I was working on my book, soon to be released, winter 2024, when I was working on my book, I used block schedules. It was the only way I could save my sanity and get through the day as a homeschooler, as a work at home mom, as just a me just to get through my day. So block schedules, just not for homeschooling, is also for life. A favorite block, one of my favorite blocks um, was genius time. All that meant was you do whatever you want to become a genius. <laughs> Basically, whatever you were really interested in, you can devote that block to just deep diving on that subject. So whatever your child is really interested in, favorite things, they have that block to work on that, but they have to, you know, you know, they can't goof off with it. Just, they need to just be serious about it, whether they're researching something about it, reading something about it, watching videos about it, or actually doing some, creating or producing something hands-on. That block is set aside for their genius time or whatever is their favorite thing to do. They can work on that. No, I didn't have it on that example, but you could have like an unschooling or um, a joker uh, block. And that block is for those days where you might have appointments coming up. It's going to be a very busy week or um, you just don't know. So that could be a block where you uh, just tell your kids, hey, unleash them out into the pastures and let them go. Also, if you don't have a lot of subjects to teach, maybe your children are younger, a good setup is to have a core block, reading, writing, math, and then all the other subjects you can loop. And in another video, I'll talk about loop scheduling, and then I'll have another video where I talk about advanced scheduling, where you bring blocks and loops together. But this is kind of like a little advanced, but not really. You just focus on the core, for one block and then the rest of the day you just do all your other subjects in a loop which is where you do a little bit of that subject move on to the next subject and then when your homeschool day is over wherever you stopped the next day is where you pick up so when you're constructing your block schedule and let me just go back here and show you what what mine looks like when you're constructing your block schedule, please factor in downtime, factor in food, food time your kids need to eat, 
And then factor in things that, you know, sometimes you might take for granted because you're so in the hustle of your homeschool day. So think about the things that your kids might really want to do. Make that a block, okay? So look at this, take a snapshot of this. But um, I do have all of these uh, schedules here. I have a blank one. Well, that's sort of blank. This is the blank one. I have a blank one here for you to download and print. You'll see at the top under the days of the week, I have priorities and personal. So um, if there's in, anything you want to focus on for that day, either for you or for your child, maybe, you know, you want to focus on spelling or vocabulary or, you know, uh, dividing fractions, you know, make a little note or, you know, special focus on, you know, this page because maybe they struggled yesterday, just whatever. You just keep that little note up there or, you know, just to say, hey, you know, we have, you know, soccer at two o'clock, whatever. But with this block schedule, you can see at a glance what's really working for you. You can see how you divide up your day and then you'll start to be more mindful of, hey, you know what? I think we're a morning family and my Two of my kids. Oh, and question, because I've been asked this. So Nikki, so I know how to divvy up the blocks, but how do I divvy up my kids? <laughs> you might have a pre uh, someone in pre-K and middle school and high school. Okay, so how do you juggle all of that? This is what can work for you. You might, number one, you might want to try a staggered block schedule, meaning for the preschooler who is up when the rooster crows, and then your high schooler who gets up when the sun is at its zenith, 12 o'clock, you can stagger it. You can work with your child, and then when your, child, your older child wakes up, they can get started on their course. So that would be a staggered day. Also, what you can do, say you, you have a middle schooler or elementary kid, and they're basically independent, but they still need help launching into their lesson for the day, okay? And maybe they have some little sticky spots, but it's the core block that you guys are in. So what are you going to do? You're going to work with the middle schooler or the, or the pre-K? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're going to have a busy box of things for that preschooler to do, okay? I have a video. Um, I need to update the video, but I have a video on how to... Um, politely and uh, intentionally distract your younger child while you work with your older child. But with a younger child, you just want to give them something to do that they can do on their own while you go work with the, with the older kids. So for a pre-K person or a kindergarten, that might be something where they just practice their handwriting. Or I'm a big fan of manipulatives. I have I always cut the box of manipulatives. They don't need your help to work with the manipulatives, right? That could be number cubes, letter cubes, where they're putting numbers or letters together, different combinations. It could be tracing activities with their hands, work on their fine motor skills, just manipulatives like that. By the way, I do have a video on um, my favorite manipulatives for all subjects, which you might want to check that out because that will be a great way to like quickly just. Throw that out to your, your younger kid while you work with your older kids within that block. Just so you can get your older kids going, then they're ready to do their independent work because maybe you went over the lesson, it's a new lesson, or maybe they were, you know, uh, they got stuck with something. So you just have to kind of help them get out the mud to get back going. Then you go back to your, your younger, your little one who was happily playing with their little manipulatives that doesn't require any work on your part. And then you go teach that core to the younger kid. And then you sit back and then you're like, yes, look at my babies. Everyone's doing what they need to be doing. Okay, I'm ready for block number two. So that's just an example. <laughs> but we're going to cover block schedules in more detail. I just wanted to get this out here just to get you introduced to what a block schedule is. It is really a game changer. You can really get through your day and feel confident. And listen, you don't have to do every subject every day. That's the beauty of a block schedule. You can do your core subjects and then you can loop or just add in all the other subjects you want to teach, but you don't have to get it all done that day. Whatever you don't get done carries over to the next day. Okay. So I hope that was of value to you. I have used 
and you might use block schedules and didn't even re realize it that you sit down with your children and put a block schedule together this will be a really great life skill to teach them early on because let me tell you when i was working on my homeschooling book uh when life gives you homeschool lesson plans to be released uh uh late winter 2024 but when i was working on my book I use a block schedule. That was the only way I can get through my day by prioritizing everything and just working in little chunks, okay? Just little chunks, little chunks, little chunks. It, it, you, move sm you move small, you move slowly, but you move. So definitely do this, set up this block schedule with your children, but kind of look at it first on your own so you know what you're talking about before you go share it with your kids, okay? <laughs> This is Nikki with Homeschool Knockouts, helping you to knock out those homeschooling challenges in your homeschool and to be the undefeated champion with your kids and in the homeschooling arena. I think I bobbled that outro, but you know what I'm trying to say. Be knockouts. <laughs>